Right, in this video, I'll be talking briefly about the user journey mapping in Design Sprint. Now, usually in um, Design Sprint, this technique is used or this methodology is used to map user experience when interacting with a certain product or certain services provided by companies. But in the context of teaching and learning, user journey mapping is good to map out what the student normally encounter or experience in achieving certain learning goals or what you intend them to achieve as the final output. For example, if you are mapping the outcome of what you did for a program or what you did for a course, then you can put the student uh, learning goal as your ultimate end. Now, to do a user mapping, what you need to do now, like what I'm showing you now, if you see, let's say I have student uh, A, who is probably below average, uh, not so good, maybe a, uh, maybe a B minus or C student. Then I have uh, student B, who could be slightly more proficient and, you know, like kind of A or B type of student. And then I have learning goals as my final end of this user journey. So uh, the kind of goal that I want them to achieve so I can list them down if I want to. So if you imagine what student A is going through, so let's say student A because of being below average, usually he will read the textbooks, right? Uh, or whatever you have given them. This is what you normally experience in, in, in the uh, classroom. So student A will be reading textbook, reading all the notes that you have given them. After that, the student will be doing memorization. So he will try to memorize as many things that he have read. And then you do more drills because being weaker than the rest, teachers tend to do um, more drills and practices, but usually drill first. Like if it's mathematics, they will be asked to memorize certain formula and all that. Then uh, the teacher will give them quizzes or uh, exercises for them to do just to measure them to see whether they have improved. And then it reaches towards the end, which is the learning goal. This is one scenario, one user journey mapping. Then we go for student B. In this case, student B probably uh, will skip certain steps because being excellent student, so you can actually give them the quizzes immediately or the exercises just to test them immediately. And then the teacher will provide uh, necessary feedback on what they should be improving. And then you give quiz again and exercises again just to test them how they improve and then you get the learning goal. So ultimately, both student A and student B uh, will be achieving your learning goals. But if you notice, the journey is a bit different. So as a designer or as somebody who is trying to design some intervention, you will try to map these two journey and see what can be done. What I'm doing now, if you notice, uh, quizzes and exercises, for example, seems to be relevant. So if you're designing some solution or innovation, then this is probably the part that you need to pay attention to. Also, if you notice, in student B, teacher provided specific feedback. And in student A, they would just drill. Maybe the feedback was there, but not as extensive as student B. Because uh, teacher for dealing with the um, weaker student tend to forget about the feedback part. So if you were to design intervention or solution, then you might want to pay attention to this uh, part of your mapping. So when you do mapping of your user journey, this is where you identify the problem or identify gaps that you would be able to address in the next. So I hope you understand what is user journey mapping in Design Sprint and um, hopefully you would be able to design solution or intervention which is useful for your students.